Hello everybody. So today I have a video showing the results for my <clears throat> de-litting my i7-7700K and overclocking to 5 gigahertz. I'm going to have skip points throughout this video so if you don't want to see the bio settings which I'm about to go over you can skip ahead to uh, the testing and basically the overview of uh, what I did for de-litting. So uh, as I said, we'll go through the BIOS now just to kind of give an idea of what my current settings are. Um, I'm not really going to go over each one, just kind of take a look at the values and then if, if you're trying to overclock yourself, you can attempt to copy these, but keep in mind that each CPU is different and what's stable for me might not be stable for you. The main thing is that uh, I've set the multiplier to 50. It's synced across all cores. Uh, I manually set my DRAM to match the RAM specifications for my RAM cards, or the clock speed specifications, I should say. Um, I disabled power saving, enabled extreme tweaking, disabled SVID support. Um, so far, I've been stable at 1.300 volts on the V-Core. Um, this is lower than what it was before I delitted, and I don't know enough about delitting to know if that is the reason why, or maybe I just didn't get as lucky last time when I was trying to do my overclocking. I did make some other changes in the BIOS compared to my previous overclocks, which could factor into this. So, anyways, uh, I got it stable at this. I did enable temperature control just because I, I didn't want it to really be trying to stay at a temperature above 90 degrees so I set that I left all of this as auto I think these are all auto I might have changed the phase control to extreme or default. I think all of these are default. I set the AI AC load line calibration and AI DC load line to 0 0.01 and I disabled speed step. I don't know if you have to disable speed step but from some other overclocking reviews of this chip I've seen that it generally is more stable when you do that. Whether or not that's true, I, I don't know. I, I never really left it on. Mm, I think that's about it. I, there's not really a whole lot to change, um, at least from what I could find. But that's pretty much the BIOS, so I'm going to boot into my computer and flip over to my desktop um, screen recording just because it's a little bit better than my phone but um, I'll be back in a second. Alright so this is the kit I used to delit and relit my CPU. I strongly recommend it. It made the whole procedure stress-free. Um, it came off nice and easy. This is a nice tool to actually you can leave the, the CPU in it and then work on everything while it's sitting nicely and it's safe in this little container. Um, so I do recommend it. I'll have a link for this in the description. Um, what I had actually done was I did order this. Um, but when I had ordered everything, I watched a video on how to do it. And that was about a month ago. And without re-watching the video, I went and did the procedure. Uh, I believe I put on way too much of the liquid metal because basically the temps were the same as they were since prior to uh, delitting. So there was no change. I knew something was wrong. So took everything apart again, cleaned it off really nicely, and then uh, basically put on this because I had some of it left over from um, basically just putting on, putting CPUs in computers and putting uh, CPU coolers on. Um, as you can see, it's something to consider between the two is that this is $10 cheaper. And um, so far it's actually brought the temperatures down about 15 degrees while overclocking so that's pretty good considering it's just a regular thermal compound um, this was the video I did watch again after realizing I had made a mistake 
and uh, just to make sure uh, what to do next time and I'll be rewatching it again <laughs> before doing it this time um, and I use this for putting the arctic silver on one difference between this video and what I did was that I didn't use super glue to put the IHS back on the CPU I used uh, RTV silicone basically just dabbed each corner and then reseated the, C the, the IHS back on the CPU and put it back in the computer so just to give an idea of the temperature differences um, I'm stable now at 1.305 volts for 5 gigahertz prior to delitting I could only get it stable at 1.350 volts I don't know if uh, this is a direct result from delitting or if there's just something in the BIOS that I missed but anyways this this is what I've been stable at so far uh, as you can see this gray color I've put because um, in Ida 64 and Prime 95 prior to delitting I thermal throttled and uh, that's with a liquid cooler so um, it's, that to me is it's too hot to even consider running this CPU at this temperature or at this clock speed um, unless you can get it stable at a lower V core and get lower temps I mean you're not gonna really see these with general use but if I can hit the max while benchmarking um, I don't really like to leave it at that so I had been running it at 4.8 for quite a while and then also at 4.5 um, which all was fine so I've delitted I've done some testing at 4.8 and I've done some testing at 5 gigahertz as you can see the max difference was 15 degrees cooler than uh, prior to delitting one thing I want to point out is um, the ADA 64 average temp shows 77 versus 52 for the pre delitting test. The reason for this was when I did all these tests, I cleared the sensors between each test for hardware info. Um, you're going to see the video I did for Cinebench, Aces Realbench, and ADA 64. I'm going to play that in a bit here. But uh, basically, I had run Cinebench and then without clearing the sensors ran A to 64 knowing that the max was gonna go above what I saw in Cinebench so um, I didn't clear the sensors realized the mistake and then I ran or cleared the sensors and ran ASUS cleared the sensors and ran Prime 95 so I'm not gonna put Prime 95 in the video because it's a 30 minute test I did and I can basically do the same thing by showing the pictures that I took before and after so um, I started the test at 12.40 p.m. As you can see, here's the temperatures prior to running any testing. Um, and the V-Core is up here, clock speeds. And then uh, I ran small FFT. And then um, 30 minutes later, stopped the test. As you can see, none of the workers stopped. Um, here's the V-Core settings and the temperatures. So, also it didn't thermal throttle, which is nice. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to be doing a video again when I get my liquid metal again that I, I reordered. And um, I guess for now what I'll do is I'll play the videos showing the testing for Cinebench, Asus, and Ada. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.